Alrighty everyone, welcome back to Law Schoolers. I hope you've been enjoying all the Two Man Congress content. Uh, it's been quite fun. I'm actually recording this episode in the middle of June. It's set to be published, I think, sometime in the middle of uh, July after all the Two Man Congress stuff is done. And part of that, it, there's two reasons for that. First, I want this episode to be beneficial to those who are preparing to go back into law school or if they are just starting law school, that they can have a resource to be able to follow as well. Second, I don't want to split up all the two-man Congress stuff. Uh, I think it's just easier to keep the two separate things kind of in their own field. That way it doesn't get kind of confusing with what's where, what's law schoolers, what's two-man Congress, all that, all that fun stuff. And so ultimately, this is going to be the first episode coming back out of the two-man Congress episodes and then preparing for law schoolers next year. With that said, looking ahead, like I said, this is the middle of June, I will be starting my 2L year. Now looking back, I just finished my 1L year, obviously. And so I want to talk about some of the things I learned during my 1L year. It's been about a month, about a month and a half since we had finals, and it's just been, I mean, so busy with the clerkship that I have, uh, and... Uh, getting some of this law school or stuff all figured out. It's been really busy, and so I want to focus on what I learned during my semesters uh, from my 1L year. And there's really big two takeaways. Uh, study hard, play hard. That's going to be the two main takeaways of this episode. It's going to be straightforward, but ultimately there's a few subcategories that I want to talk about as well. As far as study goes, we're going to talk about reading outlining and then reviewing and then obviously as far as having fun goes I'm only going to talk about one main thing there and that's to have fun. I also do want to mention too that I did have a very successful uh, first year of law school. I am not going to say what my grades were on this episode. I did post them on uh the associated article that goes along with that. I'll leave that in the show notes if you want to see how these uh, how these principles actually affect my grades. So let's go ahead and talk about study. One of the keys to law school success is going to be to study hard, and I think almost more importantly is to study early and study often. So how early should you actually begin to study? Well, the same day you learn something new, that should be when you actually begin to study. Uh, There are going to be three main suggestions I go forward in more depth. That's going to be the read, the outline, and then the review. But ultimately, the purpose of frequent study is so that you build confidence in yourself and in your knowledge about the law. The more confident you feel before finals, the more confident you will feel during finals, And that's going to affect your grade quite significantly. So let's go ahead and talk about reading. Well, the biggest way to prepare for class is to do the reading. And to brief all of the case laws that we read. I talked to a lot of students who skimped on their readings. Where they only read partially, didn't read the full thing, obviously. And I think it affected them. Uh, A lot of the time they would go find briefs, uh, review those before classes in case they were cold called. That way they'd have at least something to say. And then they would kind of breeze through the lectures. I don't think that's an appropriate way to do it, or at least an appropriate way to do it if you want to be completely successful or reach your full potential when it comes to your grades. You don't want to cut corners. Even though these other resources are good, if you use Quimby, if you use Law Schoolers, any other resources, those are going to be very helpful when it comes to preparing for classes. But one of the biggest things that you can do is to actually do the reading first. Know it, learn it, brief it. Do all of that before the lectures even occur. The second thing that you're going to want to do is outline. You can begin to outline at any time. My recommendation after these two semesters is to do it right after class. Uh, There's some pros and cons with that. Uh, The pro of doing it right after class is that the material is all fresh. 
you're not going to miss out on anything. You're going to have all your material there and you're going to be able to do it within 15 minutes. Uh, and you can do that right after class, 15 minutes, and then you're good to go. Huge pro in my opinion, and that's part of the reason why I recommend it. The con though is that you may actually include too much information. Like I said, that material is fresh, so you may accidentally include things that aren't going to be as relevant to preparing for finals or preparing for any midterms that you may have. I think this con is minor when it's compared to the pros because the pro is such a big factor because it saves you so much time hours and hours later and you don't feel as guilty well you feel guilty if you don't actually follow that that was a mistake I made during my first semester where I struggled keeping up and then I got back into it and it was it was a relief to be done with my outlines but going with my train of thought outlining is a very important thing, way to be successful in law school and outlining early will keep that material fresh and save you stress and time later on. Even if you spend the same amount of time, it's not going to feel as overwhelming later on. The third way that you can study is to review. And you should review often, very often. What are you going to review? Well, review the readings. Skim them if you want to. Most of the time you're going to be reviewing your briefs. You're going to be reviewing your outlines. And you're going to be reviewing your lecture notes. So they're going to be the three main things. My recommend is, recommendation is to also review in as many ways as possible. So instead of just reading your outlines, briefs, and notes, say them out loud. Maybe create a flow chart. Do pictures, images, a sketch. Whatever you do, get more parts of your brain involved and review the same material in several different times and that's how it makes it stick. So for example, with me with law schoolers, I read, I briefed, I went to class, I took my lecture notes, and then after class, I spoke into a microphone to put that material out there, and then later, I listened to it. So that's engaging two different parts, speaking and then listening, and then obviously writing and reading. And that's the best way that I found was a good way for me to review. Now let's go ahead and talk about having fun. And to survive law school, you're going to have to do a lot more than study. Uh, you're going to have to have some meaningful time spent outside of studying. Uh, without it, you're just going to go crazy. Uh, I've seen people do it. I've done it a bit myself where I study too much. It's kind of hard because you feel like you don't have enough time to do everything you want, especially if you're reviewing as often as you not reviewing as often as you would want to. And so you just need to take time for yourself and take time for your family, significant other, and just some you time, personal time. But I think it's important to realize what that personal time needs to consist of. I think it's something I like to call productive relaxation. I'm sure it's a term that's out there that's real, uh, but productive relaxation is not just sitting around chilling, doing nothing. I think it's doing something you enjoy that exercises your mind and gives you an opportunity to recover even while you're working. So good examples of that are going to be, is going to be exercise. Uh, board games, strategy games, uh, reading a uh, hobby book. And those are just a few examples. Obviously, it's also important to spend some time just chilling because you do need that recovery. You do need to sleep, and all that stuff is going to help you. I do also want to note the importance underneath have fun, how important it is to surround yourself with others who, one, are smarter than you, 
and two, are engaged in legal learning, and three, are just easy to be friends with. A good example for me is I have some really good friends in law school. At least I consider them really good friends. Uh, they're really good people. They are smart people. Uh, smarter than me, we all perform about the same in law school. Very academically inclined, work hard, diligent. And these people inspire me, motivate me, help me to become a better person, and help me to become a better student. Another example of this is my wife. She is very smart, very intellectual, uh, and she motivates me, encourages me to uh, work hard and to attain my best results. Huge encouragement and source of uh, support. All these people in my life, uh, friends, family, and I'm going to also include uh, religion. Uh, my God is a huge support in my life as well. All those things create me to be a better version of myself. And like I said, the results have been quite I'm trying to think of a good word here. Exciting is a good word. Satisfying. I'd say satisfying is the word I'm looking for. The results have been very enjoyable and satisfying. I've learned a lot throughout the last year. I've learned how to study diligently and surround myself with good people. And I hope that I can take that into my coming semester at Drake Law School. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Law Schoolers. Before I let you go, there are four things I want to say. The first thing is if you enjoyed these episodes and if you enjoyed the website, I would invite you to go and join Law Schoolers Pro. And you can do that by going to lawschoolers.com slash join. It's a way for you to support us, but there's also a lot of features there that I think you will enjoy. Second thing is that nearly all of our episodes are unedited. The only ones that aren't our pre-law materials, and the reason for that is so you can actually see the legal material in its raw form as I'm learning it as well. The third thing is that the information contained in these episodes are specifically only for educational purposes. They're not to be used as legal advice, and with that, the fourth thing is if it is used as legal advice, we are not liable. That is, law schoolers is not liable for any legal outcomes. Thank you again for enjoying the show. Have a good one.